shoot. Nice bass. Shoot, shoot, shoot. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, yeah, that's a nice bass down there. Holy cow. Another nice bass down below. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Look at, ah, look at that. Bigger bass now. Woo! I got a fish on. Oh, no, he just got. No, yeah, he's on. I was just letting it sit down there. It's a nice bass. Yeah. Hey, there's a keeper. Good job. Come on. Did you get yours all retied good? Okay. Sorry about that, man. Oh, that was my bad. I knew. You knew I it was going to break? Pushing it, like, just... It's 20 pound test. It shouldn't have broke. I know. What kind of knot did you put on that, man? Excellent one. I don't know. It's 20 pound test. I did put a little bit better knot in case. This time? Yeah. You were just trying to give him a chance. Oh. Oh, what you got there, Come on. Cal? Come on. What you got? Yep. Let's do a double. Oh like yeah. That was like immediate. There you go. That's well, he's a. Like your first one. What Even do you think, they, Ash? Is a too close. small? He's really small. I threw him back because you threw mine back earlier. Right. You realize we need to start counting these bass, right? Or we're gonna have to dump them all out at some point. And that'll be annoying. Yeah, you're right. Keep count. Welcome to another edition of Pacific Northwest Best Life video. As you could see, me and my friends had a great time fishing in the open ocean for lingcod and sea bass. And to do that though, we had to cross over a bar, the Westport Bar, uh, to get out to the open ocean. A river bar is an elevated uh, area of, of a river mouth or within the river where, where sediment has uh, gathered from from flows and the dangerous thing about a river bar at the mouth is uh, you'll have m much larger waves and breaking action and confused currents and it's it's one of the primary places where accidents happen while boating um, and, and getting uh, just trying to get out to the open ocean this is my boat my luma weld striker I got to be extra careful in planning a trip to go over a major bar like the Westport Bar. Other major bars are like the Columbia River Bar. Um, definitely can be super dangerous in the wrong conditions. So I wanna show you today the, the, the research and the planning I put into it um, to have a safe trip over the bar and back again and a great fishing trip as well while we were out there. Okay, one of the first places I like to start when researching uh, ocean conditions, bar conditions, it's going to be the National Weather Service marine forecast. So <clears throat> in this case, I just searched for um, National Weather Marine Forecast Westport, Washington. Top link is what I'm going to use here. And it's important to know which forecast applies to you, but for uh, most of the waters around Westport, we're interested in this coastal waters from Point Grenville to Cape Shoalwater out 10 nautical miles. Take a look at <clears throat> um, tonight, uh, east wind to 10 knots becoming northeast after midnight, wind waves two feet or less, south swell three feet at 14 seconds. So. What does all this mean? So first of all, one of the absolute um, uh, things you want to avoid being out on the ocean for is what they call a square forecast, where the swell height plus wind wave height equals the the wave duration, right? So let's say let's say this was eleven um, eleven foot swell or 12 foot swell and two foot wind waves at 14 seconds, you do not want to be out in those conditions. That's going to absolutely be um, unsafe and problematic for most for most boats. Um, <clears throat> this doesn't look too bad, but me personally, I've got a shallower V boat, smaller boat, and uh, I don't want I don't want two foot wind waves 
Um, now, what, what could happen might be significantly less than this. It says wind waves two feet or less. Um, but if you add these together, you're talking about five foot waves at 14 seconds. And then look at Friday, predicting north wind five to 15 knots, uh, becoming northwest in the afternoon, <clears throat> wind waves two feet or less, swell three feet at 14 seconds. These are generally um, decent conditions that um, that are worth um, are worth investigating uh, further. But we need a little bit more information than this. Um, not to mention, keep in mind, these are not always, um, these are forecasts, so they're not always 100% accurate. Um, our forecast was three foot swell at 15 seconds, and it ended up being three foot at uh, about six seconds with no wind at all. Um, or three foot at seven seconds. It was definitely not three foot at, at 15 seconds. Um, and what the bar looks like versus what the ocean looks like could be uh, could be two different things. So um, one way to get a, a glimpse of what things are like more likely to be on the bar is we search national data, buoy uh, center, Westport, Washington, and this top link here, the station 46211 is Westport. So you can take a look at, um, you can click on this map and you can look at other um, buoys as well. Um, not all of them have wave information, some of them just have weather information. But let's take a look at this one. This one's definitely got the wave information. And <clears throat> so you can get sort of a real... Um, you know, almost real time um, idea of of what these conditions are. So <clears throat> the way we read this is okay. So three o'clock, it's three fifty p.m. right now on on March nineteenth as I'm recording this. So it's about fifty minutes behind in this case, and it says wave height is three feet. Um, the dominant wave period, the DPD seconds is nine. So that's that wave duration. Um, this is this is a flat. This is a flat bar. This is not um, not bad at all um, to go over. Um, but there's a few other things uh, we also uh, want to take a look at. So uh, I want to know uh, what the tide is doing as well. This is you can search saltwater tides, um, Westport, Washington. You'll get up. You'll bring up this uh, this page. So in the Grays Harbor, I'll choose Westport. Point Chehalis, I'll get down to the bottom here. So we start on March 19th. And I'll just say eight, no, four, 14 days. We'll take a look at this and um, you get an idea what the tide is. So we're looking at Friday the 20th right now. And one of the things you generally want to avoid when going over a bar, either going over it or coming back over it to return on your return trip is uh, you don't want to be going over it when there's a, a peak ebb flow going on. So what does that mean? So um, see, we have a low tide at 5.42 p.m. The peak ebb or the time when the outgoing flow is strongest would typically be um, high tide plus three hours or low tide minus three hours. So in anywhere hour window around that. So typically... If you have these conditions, you probably want to avoid be go going over the bar uh, anywhere between, let's say, 2 p.m. Uh, or 1 p.m. and 3 p.m. or 1 p.m. and 4 p.m. Those are maybe the window you want to avoid returning. Um, you're going to see rougher bar conditions when you have strong outgoing flows, both from you know, Grace Harbor is the mouth of several freshwater river systems, the Chehalis, Humptulips, um, and uh, it's all of that water rushing out along with the ebb running into either west westerly wind or large west uh, swells uh, can create some real problems. You, you'd much rather be going over on a calm day uh, and going over on um, a flood tide or near slack tide, either low or high tide. So um, just a few things to consider. Now, the actual ebb current flow is sometimes a little off from just looking at the tide tables. So there's a few other things I like to look at and I'll switch over to my um, 
showing you my cell phone. The Windy app. This is an awesome, awesome app for um, figuring out in a visual way kind of what the wind is doing on a trip like this. So I'm looking at right now, see 1,500 hours on Thursday the 19th, but you get down to the right zoom level and then you want to kind of scroll forward, play it forward. Let's say we were thinking about going out on Friday. I'm thinking, okay, five o'clock looks good. Five miles an hour, seven o'clock, eight o'clock looks good. Nine o'clock looks good. 10 o'clock, 11. Okay. This looks like a good wind day. And wait a second, 12 o'clock. We jump up to 12 miles an hour, one o'clock, two o'clock, um, three o'clock. And the wind just kind of keeps increasing, 15 miles an hour. Uh, so there's definitely this this forecasted wind increase in the afternoon that um, you might think twice about because that could come a couple hours early. It could make it difficult um, to get back over the bar in my in my boat. So I'm not so sure about these conditions. Uh, Navionics app, <clears throat> which will show me the actual current. Um, situation for when I'm thinking of going. Sometimes the current is a little different than the actual tide uh, table timing. So here I'm looking at the actual current prediction for the entrance of Grays Harbor. Again, I'm scrolling forward through Thursday. Here we are into Friday now. And now I'm kind of looking at, <clears throat> at Friday's current prediction. So in the early morning, we got a, we got a flood goes, um, when the arrow is pointed that way, it's a flood. All the flood current goes all the way till about 11 a.m. <clears throat> and then we start to go into the ebb. That's also around the time when that wind's supposed to kick up. So if I'm doing a trip on Friday, I'm probably trying to get back in after just a couple hours. It's probably a short trip. Um, just a few things to think about as you're as you're doing some research and, and planning for. Um, for going over the bar and going out in the ocean, hopefully having a good, safe trip. Now I want to show you how to get rigged up for fishing the open ocean out in front of Westport. So there's basically two different setups that we fished out in Westport, out of Westport. Um, first, primarily we were targeting lingcod with this. We did get bit by a few sea bass doing this, but you start with uh, just a, your basic uh, eight ounce to 10 ounce uh, mooching sinker. And now we're just gonna take a leader that significantly shorter than your typical uh, salmon mooching leader, but it's about 30 inches, use 30 pound mono. Um, front hook is a three aught, uh, big river gammy, and then back is a two aught. And all I need to do is out of herring. And I'll show you how to rig up the herring as well uh, that we were using. So you want a good spacing between the two hooks because um, especially, well it really depends on the, the size of herring you're using, but we were using uh, blue label. You can use green label as well, but you want this hook to go um, in the back half of the body and there to be some so a, a loop kind of in the line or a little bit of slack in the line helps hook them up. So. If you hook, if you have your uh, herring rig too far forward, sometimes you won't get them with the trailer hook. A lot of the lings that we uh, hooked were actually uh, only hooked on the trailer, so it's an important part of the whole of the whole business. Um, on our other setup here, this is just a you know like a salmon spinning rod, pretty um, uh, or jigging rod, not super heavy weight. So on this one, we just got uh, 20 pound Power Pro test braid and add one of these jig heads. What was killing it for us out there was these Berkeley Gulp uh, penny colored uh, grubs, six inch grubs. Um, they're scented and these things were just absolutely getting devoured. Look at this one's missing a tail. Um, just getting devoured by the sea bass every time we passed over it. We had our limit of sea bass uh, super fast. So you're just running, running the jig head all the way down and out like this. See that? And then you're fishing. And they just absolutely go nuts for these things. Fantastic. So here's a 
size of herring we were using. This is about the simplest way you can do this. You take this front hook and you're gonna put it right through the bottom lip up through the nose like this, right? And you're gonna take this back hook. And we're gonna run it. Let's see, let's see from this angle. We're gonna run it right here, just about midway through the body. And this is this is the way, all the way we run these. They got a little bit of spin to them. And as we're fishing them, we're basically just dropping all the way to the bottom, coming up five to seven cranks, and then just dropping all the way to the bottom again. Controlled drop, of course. You don't want this leader tangled around your weight, which can happen if you drop it too fast. So as long as you can get over the bar, get back over safely, you've got your bait, you've got your, your uh, sea bass set up, uh, you're gonna have a great time. Just gotta find uh, a rock pile out there. Any rock pile is gonna hold bass, uh, it's gonna hold ling, and be a great opportunity. It's really important um, for anyone going over the bar, but especially small boat operator, to pick the right conditions uh, that are gonna be safe and not cause a problem or put yourself or any one who's with you in danger. There we go. There we go. Yeah. Fish on. Fish on. Fish on. I'm not sure if he's still on. I may have lost him. All right. Oh, nice one. Maybe. Man, we almost had a trifecta right here. Huh? Yep. I think that's what mangled my uh, herring. Yeah, those scented, big, those scented plastics are sweet. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, he came off. He came off. Me too. There we go. There you go. There we go. There we go. Double. Double. Double, double trouble. There you go. Oh, yeah. I got a baby. I got a baby. No, let's keep him. Get him here. Get him here. This is what? How many on the boat now? No, nope. it's 10. 11. 10. Wait, we got up. five. Ah, jeez. Oh, we have to break out the, the white cooler to help us. We haven't even put any big wings in here yet. <laughs> I love it. Three of them catch ones so we could all have one on. <laughs> Thirteen. Hey, you got one. Woohoo! Speed racer cut. Whoa, big headed. Sorry, I got one already. Oh, lost. Missing this one. All right, <clears throat> that was fun. Going back to ling, ling fishing. That was fun. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's got to catch all the ling. Probably. I know. That's you. Come on, man. <clears throat> oh, come on, come on, come on. Uh, he's, yeah, he's not he's not very big. No, he's a wing. Baby. Yeah. There you go. Oh yeah, a bunch of big more school bath. Oh, that was a better one. Too, darn it. Uh, uh, like that one. There you go. Oh, a huge school of bass. Holy cow. 
took me two seconds to pick one up after that last one. Oh, you got one. Oh, we got to drive back there. Yeah, I thought I had a bunch of plastic sacks. Yep. Don't. Don't. All right, wrapping up here. Thanks for watching another Pacific Northwest Best Life video. Hope you were uh, entertained and educated by uh, everything we presented here. And uh, just uh, if you uh, think of any other safety advice for boating in the open ocean or uh, going over a river bar, um, feel free to drop it in the comments down below. Love to learn from your experience and just try to keep everyone safe out there. If you enjoyed this video, hit subscribe, give it a like and appreciate your support. Um, also feel free to check out our blog, pnwbestlife.com for lots more information about recreational opportunities in the Pacific Northwest.